his junk was out hello what is up you guys welcome back so i actually changed my name i changed it to gingu two 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 because uh everything is literally gingu my snapchat my instagram my license plate used to be gingu you know people used to call me gingu like that was my name and now no one calls it that i'm like what happened I'm like, Gingu, perfect, perfect time to bring it back. Oh my God, this bitch is shedding. It's me, Gingu. But um, today, I'm down with another little story time. And this one is going to be about the time I got him fired. So, I was working, I'm an automotive student, right? Okay, and I was working at a garage at a hot rod shop and they worked on they worked on new cars too but they mainly worked on old cars like from the 50s 60s 70s you know hot rods and so we were working on a lot of impalas mustangs corvettes camaros like lots of nice antique cars okay and nothing was wrong with them no never no nothing was ever wrong with them we were always doing upgrades so instead of like changing flat tires or changing oil or whatever we would be replacing engines and you know replacing the whole front shebang <laughs> you know where they got the ac compressor the condenser the alternator all that you know we just changed all that stuff you know upgrade it or the fuel pump you know upgrade that all kinds of stuff so and then actually one time we had this old Corvette in there for like a year or something. They were working on it. They were upgrading everything. They put a whole new sniper system on it with the you know, alternator, condenser, water pump, air compressor, you know, all that. Brand freaking new. Just put it on, you know, not even done putting it on. And the guy comes by and he's like, you know what? I think we should just do an engine swap. So then, you know, we got to do an engine swap and, you know, whatever. It's all cool work. You know, they also do interior and, you know, fix that up. And so this was literally my dream job. Okay. Because at this point, I hadn't even started my automotive classes. And I got a job at this garage. And it was, it was so cool. It was literally so cool. And I couldn't believe it was my job. It was like, my dream job i was like what do i even need to go to school for i already got my dream job you know and so i loved it they paid me horrible um i think the guy that made the least i don't know if he made the least there but he was literally 20 years old and i know how much he was making and i made half of what he was making okay so that was like a, a what half not like he got paid a dollar more an hour. No, he got paid twice as much as me. Okay. But that's all right. You know, I really just like the job and it's good to have some experience. So, you know, just don't complain. Just suck it up. You know, I was the only girl there. And yes, we had a lot of older customers, like rich old customers, because these cars were very, very nice. And some of their bills for their upgrades would be, you know, 10k plus so these dudes were old and rich and so i was the only girl there so of course i would get hit on all the time harassed all the time literally i had a bunch of people ask me to be you know one of their girlfriends and you know all this stuff blah 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 and i was just like no you know that was not even the vibe that i was putting out you know but of course they see a girl and they're just going to try and get some well no that was not my vibe. I was always very professional. You know, this is my work. This is my dream job. Like, I don't want to mess this up and I'm not going to let you mess it up for me. Okay. And so I worked there for a few months, you know, everyone was getting really comfortable with me. They were like making jokes, which is fine. You know, inappropriate jokes. I'm like a boy anyways. So, you know, I have like a boy's sense of humor and I have like you know a dark sense of humor i have an inappropriate sense of humor i think everything is funny like everything that comes out of my mouth is most of the time a joke you know and sometimes i'll say stuff and people be like 
I'm like, it's a joke. Like, don't get offended. But there was this tow truck driver and he worked for our garage. And, you know, he had his own business, but he worked for us, you know? And so he was there probably like once a week, he would come by to pick up cars. And sometimes, you know, I guess his job, he doesn't work with anybody else. You know, he runs his own company. So it's just him, you know, and his wife. So, you know, I bet he gets lonely or bored or whatever. And so whenever he'd be coming to our shop to pick up a car or drop off a car or whatever, he would stay and talk for like 20 minutes, you know? And so I got used to him, you know, I saw him like once a week and I wouldn't like directly talk to him, but like we would be close to each other. He'd be talking to whoever I was like working with. And so of course I was just like a little bit in the conversation you know but i never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him but you know i didn't think anything was sus he's like 40 you know married has his own company you know i thought he was just all about his money like i was you know this is my job i'm here to be professional and fix cars and make my money like that's it i work there eight to five 8 a.m to five like everybody else and then once i started school i ended up I could only work starting at 2 p.m. So they had me working after hours from two to eight at night. And so from two to five, when I was there, everyone else was there, right? And at five o'clock, most of the people left and it was just me and two other dudes every night from five to eight. It was just me and two other guys. And so it was really chill, you know, we were just really focused on our work more than the regular work hours because there was not all these other people, there was not all these distractions, you know? And so we were just really more focused on our work. And one night, you know, this dude, I guess I should give him a name. I'm gonna name him Steve. I don't know anyone named Steve, but sorry for the There's this one night where Steve is at the garage and but he's parked in the parking lot right next to the garage like not in our parking lot at all he's parked at the one right next to it at the bar and so i you know everyone's packing up to leave except for me and these other two guys so you know we, we kind of have some downtime while everyone's packing up their stuff to leave and so i go walk over there to steve i'm like what are you doing here he's like oh i need my check i was like okay well like he was just sitting in the truck. He was in his tow truck. He was just sitting in there. I'm like, okay, um, I guess I could go tell them. He's like, yeah, sure, yeah. And so I go tell them. I'm like, oh, you know, he's sitting in the parking lot. He needs his check. And they're like, right now? And I was like, I don't know, dude, apparently. And so, you know, they write him a check. They give it to him, everything. And then I go and I start working again because, you know, but it's all fun and games and everything and then everyone leaves so then it's like time to work so i go back to working right and it's getting kind of cold outside and so i'm going out to the car to get my jacket and his tow truck is parked like okay. here's my car and then here's his tow truck like they were pretty close to each other i was on the edge of our parking lot and he was on the edge of the parking lot right next to us and so our cars were pretty close to each other and so i go out there and i'm getting my jacket and i'm like what are you still doing out here and he's like oh i don't even know what he said i'm like what are you still doing here i guess he was just bored he was out there literally hitting his uh dad pen he, and i guess he was just out there bored or like you know on cloud nine or whatever he didn't know what he was doing i guess I'm like, you know, what the heck are you doing out here? He was like, oh, nothing, you know, whatever. And he starts talking to me. Okay, mind you, I, we are like this far apart. I'm at my car still. Uh, We're probably like five feet apart, six feet apart, something like that. And so I'm at my car, you know, I put my jacket on and he's talking to me from his tow truck. He's like yelling out the window, talking to me and so i'm like okay and i'm talking to him back and he's talking about my car and he's like oh come here come here like let me show you something and he's like pulling up all these upgrades and stuff that i can do in my car he's like oh come here come here 
and so I keep like taking one step closer every time he says that and he's showing me you know stuff about my car I'm like oh yeah cool blah 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 and then he starts talking about his family and he pulls out like literal pictures of his family like picture pictures you know like not on his phone like literal physical pictures which was like why do you have that but anyways so he put out pictures of his family and for some reason he's like oh come here come look at this come look at this but he's not holding the pictures like out so i can see it he's holding the pictures like right here and so i have i actually have to walk up to his truck to see what he's talking about he keeps going oh come look at this come look at this i didn't think anything of it you know i met this man you know several times i've talked to him you know he worked with me he's literally told me that he's married like i wasn't thinking anything of it and he's like oh come look at this come look at this and so i literally like have to go up there and i'm at his truck like this like i'm at the door he's in this big old tow truck so i'm like peeking over like this and I look down to where he's holding the pictures and I don't even know how to say this like his junk was out his junk was out his junk was out that whole time the entire freaking time and I had no idea I think this was my face and then I literally turned around and I just walked away. I go, what? And so, you know, I go back in the garage and I'm like, what is Steve doing out there? You know, and my coworkers, you know, they had great sense of the humor. You know, we was always joking with each other. I was actually close with these two guys that I work with. You know, we, I, nothing ever was weird. They, one of the dudes, I was like, oh, probably smoking meth and beating his dick. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, like, that's normal for him to be doing that, apparently. And so, I just didn't say anything because I was confused. To be honest, I was confused. And so, that was on a Friday. And I didn't have work again until Monday. And so, I saw my boyfriend over the weekend and I told him... And he got so mad. He was like, what the F? Like, blah, 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 blah. You know, like, that's not okay. Did you kick him in the nuts? Like, did you tell something? Did you shoot him? Like, what? You know, and I was like, no, I thought it was an accident. He was like, I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm not a boy. I don't got one of those. They're just flopping around. Like, I honestly thought it was an accident. He was like, that doesn't happen on accident. I was like, yeah, like now thinking back on it, he kept telling me, oh, come here, come look at this. Oh, come here, come look at this. Cause he wanted to do it. Just not like out in the parking lot. He wanted me to see it in his truck. My friend's like, you know, that's not okay. You need to press charges. Like you need to tell your mom, you need to do all this and this and this and this. And I was like, okay, like I'll do something. I'm definitely not telling my mom because my mom would go nuts. So I told my best friend and she was like, I would have sat there and screamed and screamed and screamed. I would have screamed out the top of my lungs. I would have screamed rape. I would have punched him in the face. Like there's so much you could have or should have done. I was like, I was just in shock. I was in shock and I was just so confused and so I just didn't even do anything but on Monday I go in there you know I'm in my nice sh my nice shoes my I was in my fours and I go up into the office and I tell my boss and he's like oh my gosh like oh my gosh he's like I'm so sorry like you don't have to leave and I was like I want to I don't want to be anywhere near here i don't want him to know where i am ever like if i still work here i don't want him even knowing that which obviously he knows where i work so i was like i just don't want to see him ever again you know i don't want any chance of running into him like it's fine just you know i just don't want to be here anymore and i'm not coming back and he's like 
oh my gosh you know okay like i'll give you your check um did you tell anyone and i was like no like i thought it was an accident i don't know i was confused and he's like okay and so i'm walking back to my car you know like i'm sitting in my car I text my boyfriend tell him you know i did it and i was crying the whole time like you know i don't know if you see my eyes are getting red and watering now because it's just a sensitive subject because of a whole bunch of other things that has happened but that was also like you know kind of scary i've had guns to my head and everything i've literally had no choice but i don't think he had anything on him because i just walked away and he didn't even say anything and so sirens sirens every single night you know i'm walking back to my car and i see my boss go in from the office building into the garage and i was like oh my gosh he's gonna tell them and you know i don't know it's like it's not embarrassing it's just really uncomfortable and i was already crying at this point i didn't want to you know announce it to everybody what happened and so my boss goes in there and i'm like oh my gosh she's gonna tell them and so he tells them and one of the dudes that i worked with that night he told him because he was like basically the manager like he was the head of the garage besides the owner and so he told him and i worked with him the most and and so he came out there and he came out to my car he was like are you okay like i'm so sorry i'm like yeah and he was like why didn't you tell me why didn't you say something you know i would have taken care of him right then and there you know he never would have been back you know like i would have done something you know like you know he he definitely would have done something he probably would have put him in the hospital to be honest because he was crazy and i really loved him that other guy not steve so he's like why didn't you tell me like you know i would have taken care of it you know i would have handled it right then and there i was like i know i just i honestly thought it was an accident you know i don't know how those things work you know they just be i thought it was just hanging out like i don't know i thought it was an accident but i talked to my boyfriend and he told me you know that doesn't happen on accident and he was like no it 100 percent does not so <laughs> That is the story time of how I got someone fired. But, you know, obviously I didn't get him fired. He got himself fired. Okay. But y'all need to keep this in mind. Remember this story. Okay. Because Steve, you know, the, to the tow truck driver, Steve, his uncle is my teacher. His uncle is my teacher. Okay, so the next story time is about his uncle. Y'all can only guess. But yeah. Okay, my eyelash is about to fall off now because I'm crying. But that's the end of the story time. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, definitely, 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 definitely. If anything like that happens to you, say something. Especially in the workplace or at school. Um, you know, they fired him. They didn't question me at all at all which i wasn't expecting you know i didn't expect them to just believe me and to fire him like that and to take it so seriously because i i've never said anything before because of just all the shows and everything i've watched where the girls are never believed you know that i always just think they're making it up for attention or something you know so i've never said anything before so i couldn't even believe how supportive everyone was when i said something <sighs> but yes that's the end of this story time thank you guys for listening and watching me cry um if you ever don't know what to do you know, you can always hit me up, DM me on Instagram, 
you know, talk to your mom, talk to your best friend. Oh, new subscriber. Hi. Madara. That's cute. Shout out to you, new subscriber. A lot of the time I feel like I'm overreacting because I've just been through so many situations like this and I just have so much PTSD that anything is really, really, really triggering to me. And so I feel like I'm overreacting if I say anything about it. But it's not, you know, it's illegal, it's dangerous, it's scary. You know, like, I don't care how much I work out, I'm never going to be able to fight off a six foot four grown man. Never. I don't care how skinny he is. Y'all see how skinny, like. <laughs> ah! So I don't care, literally say something if you ever feel uncomfortable say something you know and I almost didn't say something because he didn't physically do anything to me you know like I've been in much much worse situations where I haven't said anything about it because there was no proof but it doesn't matter it's just not okay it is not okay and it's taken me a very long time to realize that it's not okay and that they need to have consequences you know because it's been so many times where stuff has happened but they don't get any consequences so i you know i gave up for so long and then you know my boyfriend was like no and my best friend was like you need to say something so i did you know my best friend she wanted me to make a whole report she wanted him to be in jail you know she wanted me to ruin his life I was like, I'm not trying to do that. I just don't want to be around it. You know, but it is what it is. It's always going to happen. Being a girl, it is normal. And it does happen all the time. But that doesn't mean that it's okay. And I get very, very mad whenever people harass me like that. And say stuff. And do stuff like that. I get very mad. Because I don't know who these guys think that they are. That they can do this. I don't know who raised them like that. To think that they're invincible. And they can treat women like that. And pressure them and literally force them to do things i don't know who told you that was okay but that's how i grew up is thinking and being told you know just keep your mouth shut basically and, you know i've always kept my mouth shut until i think then that was the first time i said anything and i was 19 years old after you know everything that happened when i was a child when i was a teenager when i was in high school you know the, everything that was the first time i ever said anything that was definitely not the first time anything has happened that was probably like the hundredth time at least at least that's probably like the two thousandth time to be honest with you please say something because there's people who are scared to say something or there's people who don't know that it's not okay and so everybody who says something who gets perverts fired or off the streets or whatever you know you're making a change and you're making them realize they can't go around doing that you know i don't know why they think that they can but it's a wake-up call for them too you know most of the time we're not doing anything wrong to call that upon ourselves no we're not people like need to keep in their pants you know that's my story time thank you for watching and i'll see you guys later uh, follow me on Snapchat and Instagram, not Snapchat, but follow me on Instagram and DM me if you have any questions. It's at x.gingu.x. Okay, x.gingu.x. I don't know why I'm so weird, y'all. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.